Audio is very important, whether you're producing audio for a web page or a video. I've worked in Houston area radio for many years and taught audio editing for a university. It's something I really enjoy. For this lesson, we'll look at how audio is produced, how radio stations are regulated, and how they're structured. Pay attention, because there'll be a quiz at the end of the video. First, we'll look at how radio stations are organized. Remember, television stations are organized in a similar way. Every radio station has a control room, sometimes called master control. This is where the signal leaves the station and goes into radio land. It's where the DJ will sit. Sometimes at a large radio station, like in Houston, you have a producer working along with a person doing the talking. Morning drive and afternoon drive are the most important radio times because these are the times when people are coming and going from work in Houston and around the country. Radio stations put a lot of effort into sounding good during drive time. In Houston, you typically have two or three people in the control room during morning and afternoon drive. You'll also have a producer who handles the studio console and runs commercials and audio soundtracks when needed. Your control room console is an expensive piece of equipment that mixes everything together and sends it into radio land. One of the things feeding into a radio station is a recorder used for people calling the stations for giveaways and other events. Hey! This radio station uses a Vox Pro system. They're very common in broadcasting. You just hit the record button when someone calls in. You record what they're saying. Then you edit the call. You're out, right? and play it back through the control room console that goes into radio land. Yeah, thank you, Pat, I appreciate it. There are three types of radio. Live radio is just what it sounds like. It's a live DJ pushing buttons, playing music, and doing everything manually by touch. There's live assist. It's the second type of broadcasting. The DJ works with the computer. All the sounds and sound bites are on the computer. And the DJ just merely presses a button and hits stop when he or she wants to talk on the radio. This is very common now. It's widely used, especially in major market. Finally, you have stations that are fully automated. Everything is pre-recorded into a computer and nothing is live. Everything you hear in Radio Land is recorded and coming from a computer. Microphone selection is really important. Uh, a lot of people try to shoot video using the microphone that's built into their camera. And you can do that if you really have to. But it's really not a great idea because you pick up a lot of crowd noise. Now, if you're using a handheld microphone, uh, you can be a little bit more directional and limit the additional noise that's in the room when you're interviewing someone. If you're in a noisy auditorium, you have what's called a shotgun microphone. It's a microphone that's very, very directional and it records only what's directly in front of it. Now this microphone is an expensive studio microphone, but it has disadvantages if you're going to use something like this for video. It requires what's called phantom power. It's a power source from outside the microphone. And, and you, so you have to carry batteries along with it or something like that that are kind of cumbersome at times. Cardioid microphones are very popular with journalists. They're used quite a bit with electronic news gathering for television. They record in a heart-shaped pattern. They're mostly directional, though they can get a little sound from the sides. Shotgun microphones are extremely directional, so you can use them in a very loud place, like a gymnasium where everybody's screaming at the top of their lungs. In addition to a control room, radio and television stations also have production rooms, or suites. These are where commercials are produced or pre-recorded. 
Radio and television stations also have newsrooms where news originates from. The equipment found in these rooms is similar to what you saw earlier in the control room. But your production rooms and newsrooms cannot send audio and video directly to a television viewer or radio consumer. Remember, all television and radio broadcasts come through master control. There's one other thing that must be mentioned. Radio and television are regulated by the Federal Communications Commission, or FCC. Radio and television frequencies are considered to be the property of the public. Broadcasters must prove to the FCC that they're producing radio and television programs that are serving the public. I almost forgot to mention something really important. It's writing gain. It's controlling the audio output to the transmitter. So you got a signal that's running through your console. And you have little sliders that go up and down. Because sometimes your music is real soft and it needs to be increased. You do that with the sliders. And you have a little meter or gauge. With this one, you see two red lines and two orange lines underneath it. Make sure that those orange lines get close to it, but don't go above it. Okay, let's review and see how much you remember. Which type of microphone would you use in a real loud gymnasium? You'd use a shotgun microphone. What's the organization that regulates radio and television? It's the Federal Communications Commission. Finally, what do you call controlling the audio output to the transmitter? When it's soft, you increase. When it's loud, you decrease. It's called Riding Gain. That's a look at audio for radio and television. I'm Jim Becker.